Hey guys! Today, we're going to explore how to effectively leverage Requestly for GraphQL APIs. Unlike tools created for REST APIs, which typically provide filtering based on individual API endpoints, GraphQL requests are sent to a single endpoint with varying request bodies. Therefore, we need a way to filter based on the body of the request. Requestly offers a suite of tools that can greatly enhance your GraphQL debugging experience. For instance, if you navigate to HTTP rules and click on New Rules, you'll find an array of options that can assist in debugging both REST and GraphQL APIs. However, in this tutorial, we'll focus specifically on the rules that are beneficial for GraphQL. The redirect rule, as the name implies, redirects your request from one endpoint to another. The Cancel Request option allows you to cancel requests to observe how your front-end application responds. The Replace rule enables you to find and replace parts of your URL. With Modify Header, you can add, remove, or modify values in your request headers. Query params work similarly by allowing you to modify query parameters, including adding, removing, and editing them. Insert Script is a bit different. While it's not exclusively related to GraphQL, it can be very useful for inserting your JavaScript or style sheets into a web page. The Modify API Response rule is particularly popular among GraphQL users, allowing them to alter the response from a GraphQL API. Similarly, the Modify Request Body rule is handy for changing the body of your requests. This is the second most popular rule among GraphQL API users. Additionally, the Delay Network Request rule simulates network delays, and the User Agent rule lets you modify the user agents of your requests. For this demonstration, we'll see how Modify API Response rule can be beneficial. Let's create a rule. This field allows you to define a meaningful name for the rule. For now, we'll leave it as it is. The description field is where you can add some details to your rule for future reference. In the resource type section, you'll choose the type of API you're working with. For REST APIs, you'll get this interface. For GraphQL APIs, you'll notice an additional filter, which is the operation filter. GraphQL APIs cannot be uniquely identified by just the endpoint. You need an extra filter, which is where operation name comes in. Now, let's see an example of how this rule works. We'll go to medium.com, a website that uses GraphQL in the backend to load all the information. We will modify this section, so let's find out which API is responsible for it. We will reload the page. I've already applied the filter for GraphQL, so it's showing GraphQL APIs only. Now, I'm checking the operation name. The right sidebar query is responsible for the data in this particular section. If we inspect the response, we see topics like data science and self-improvement. If you check the payload, the right sidebar query is the operation name listed. Other GraphQL APIs also target the same endpoint, so we'll copy this endpoint to focus specifically on the GraphQL API. As an additional filter, we will use the operation name and its value for filtering. Notice that the whole query is within an array, starting with zero. We'll use dot notation to access the operation name or any other key necessary. With this particular setting, we can accurately target this specific GraphQL API. Every time this API request comes in, we'll be able to intercept it using this filter. Now let's look into modifying that. In the response status code, you can assign any status code you prefer. For now, we'll maintain the default, meaning if we don't assign any value, it will preserve the original response code. However, we will certainly modify the response body. Regarding the response body, there are two options available. One is static data, where you can enter any JSON or text to be returned. The other is dynamic response, where you can use JavaScript to craft the response dynamically. You'll have access to various elements, including the method, URL, the actual A, PI, response, response type, request headers sent, request data comprising the request body, the response in JSON format. Using all these parameters, you can generate any type of response you need. For the moment, we'll work with static data. Now, if we copy the response and make some changes to the values, for example, instead of data science, let's write requestly. We'll also adjust the requestly ID 
so it redirects to Requestly. Or perhaps, for variation, we could change it to something different, such as self-improvement. This will ensure the text reads Requestly, yet it should link to the self-improvement category. Now, let's save the changes and refresh the page. You'll observe that the first item is Requestly, and upon clicking it, it should take us to the self-improvement section. It's working exactly as intended. Henceforth, each time the page is reloaded or any action is taken, this rule will consistently apply to all types of requests from any page. If this particular section appears on a different page, the change will be mirrored there as well. Now, let's attempt to modify the request. Before doing that, let's turn this rule off, as it will keep modifying the response of this operation. And we are going to modify the request body of the same operation, so let's create another rule to modify the request body of the same GraphQL API. Let's check this request once again. We'll copy the URL endpoint. In this case, we'll use programmatic JavaScript. Within this system, you can use the body as JSON and also return the body as JSON. Recall that previously we had an array. Let's begin by getting the first item and then specifying the operation name. We'll put it inside an IF statement, equal to our right sidebar query. Now let's try to modify the value of the query. We'll copy the value of query and place it inside body as JSON at index 0 and query. Now, let's say we want to remove the topic name parameter. Let's check the name of parameter in response body of the request. This is the title that is being shown. Let's remove this display title and save the rule. If we refresh, the topic names are gone. Only the empty placeholders are visible. However, if you click on one, it will still take you to the intended page. Because we have not removed the ID, we've only removed the label. We can also make another change. Let's try changing the limit of items we load. For example, now we want to load 200 items. As you can see, we now have many items appearing. Previously, it was just seven items in one row, but now we have multiple rows. This demonstrates how the modify request rule functions. Now, let's explore how other rules can assist us. If you go to the modify header rule, you can enter the URL, add a request header, remove a request header, or override a request header. You can do the same for response headers as well. However, we currently do not have exclusive GraphQL support for this feature. It is still in beta and will be released to the public soon. Until then, your filters will be applied to all API calls. There's also the replace string rule, which you can use to redirect your API calls. For instance, medium.com's production, GraphQL, API's hostname is medium.com. Assume their staging hostname is stag.medium.com. This rule will check for the endpoint, find medium.com in it, and redirect all the requests to stage.medium.com. Essentially, it just replaces the part of the URL and redirects the request to the final URL. All APIs will be redirected to stage.medium.com. This enables our production front end to connect with our staging front end APIs. This is the essence of the replace rule. Let's examine another rule the delay network rule. With this rule, you can introduce a delay to your network requests. Imagine you copy an endpoint rule and decide to add a delay, let's say 5 seconds, which is equivalent to 5,000 milliseconds. Consequently, all API requests to this GraphQL API will incur a 5-second delay. Currently, we have a special filter for GraphQL APIs in beta, which will be launched shortly. Until then, you can apply it across all rules. You can simply toggle the Enable or Disable switch to test different behaviors. That's it for this video. Let us know if you want us to add more examples and how Requestly helps you. Happy debugging!